Welcome to War Nerds. Visualize your vocabulary. Turn any SAT word into a picture and remember it forever. Make a picture of it last longer. That's the motto of War Nerd. And today I'm just gonna go ahead and st stop and not talk and not stop talking nonstop. And I'm just gonna go ahead and keep rapping. Today we're doing day number five as shown right here. Let me just change it to green real quick. And let's start off with our first word. First off, we have convival. Convi oh, convival. 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 Ah, uh, yeah. I probably should stop talking. <laughs> All right, I'll take breaks now and then convival. Now convival here just basically is an adjective and it just basically means friendly. They're friendly. When someone's convival, they're like, hey man, hey, great guy, great guy, those kinds of things. And you remember this word with con video because uh, these are some con, uh, con ex-cons and they're going ahead and they're all very convival. Look at this one. This guy's just doing his nice day. This guy's being friendly. This guy is like, hey, anyone needs his new shirt? No one's fighting each other and being tough and like, I'm the toughest there is. No one is doing that. And of course, you remember this with con video. You're looking at con video footage and you actually feel bad. You actually feel jealous of them because at least they are con viable. You are the one to become viable with. Next up, we have this word. And <laughs> yeah, this is going to be weird. It's called dichotomy. Uh, let me just redo this. Dichotomy. Now dichotomy. Now dichotomy here is just basically means difference. Uh, your difference. There's a lot of different things that can literally happen here, and someone who's extremely different. And you remember with the name of this guy, Psycho Tommy. Because when you're a psycho Tommy, you're just gonna go ahead and you're like, eh, I see, I'm the boss of the jail here, and you are supposed to go in that corner. Hey, so there are eleven people. You see those eleven people here? What? 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 Well, five of them. Are bad people. The uh, rest of the six of them are good people. And I reward them. Ah, I see our troublemaker. Eh? I'm gonna put the black hat on ya. Puts the black hat on him. Now go there and wear it for the rest of your nice little life here. Like, and you are like, help, give, put, give me another inmate. Anyone except Psycho Tommy. Would you rather have Psycho. Would you rather have Psycho Queen? Anyone but any psychos. All right, that works out really well, don't you think? Next up, we have nebulous. Now, nebulous here, nebulous. Let me just change my color real quick. Nebulous here just basically means um, cloudy because when something's nebulous, you can't really remember very well either because it's pretty, pretty unclear. So you remember it with the word less, nephew less. Uh. Nephew less. All right, here we go. Now, so you're at a family reunion party, and what, some of uh, one of your nephews come up, and he's like, "Hey, uncle, uncle, uh, whatever your name is, comes up, and hey, don't you remember me? I'm Les, and your nephew Les. Ah, I still remember those days when you took me out fishing, and you're like, Les, uh, right, Les. Next up, we have diffident. Now, diffident here it just basically means. Uh, let me just go here a bit. Reserved. Now, you're not reserved. You're not reserved at all. You, everyone else has a date, but you're the only one who's not, not does not have a date, and you're reserved. You're different from anyone else. You don't like this party, and because you have no one to be with, no one feels bad for you. Next up, we have garble. Now, garble here just basically means you're garbling up, you're mi mix mixing things up, and this just basically means twist. So you're talking nonsense, and then everyone else is like gargling their water a bit, and then you start garbling about gargling water, and you, you, I, I see, you, I'm garbling my words right now. Get it? I always garble my words. All right, next up we have laconic. Laconic. Laconic just basically means brief, and here it is—it's pretty great. It, it's, it, this is milk. I'm pretty sure it's cheese, and they're like. This is good for your own health, mommy, uh, and so just lick on it, man. Just lick on it. That's how you remember Larconic, uh, okay? All right, next up, we have recant. Recant just basically means renounce, and since you're renouncing someone, it just basically means you're rejecting that person, you're not going anywhere. And you remember this with recant. I'm renouncing you from this family. Go into the shower or you get a little head headshot. Oh, because why? You reek of ants. We all reek. We all ants. We all really smells. It doesn't matter. You reek the most. Alright, next up, we have feckless. 
Feckless just basically means useless, ineffectual, it's pretty much useless. Like how the snake is doing here, you trying to use chopsticks as fake legs. The snake stole some chopsticks to go ahead because he thought life was worthless without legs, then he tried to use these for fake legs, but then he realized they're really useless for legs, they're really useful for picking up stuff if you don't want your hands to get dirty, but they're really useless for being legs because you're just gonna get yourself punctured. Our next word is chimerical. A chimerical here just basically means uh, fictional. It's fake. It does not really exist in real life. So you're sitting on the lawn in the park trying a little picnic and you're trying to take a nap with your dog. However, once you look up before you fall into sleep, you, free, you see a bunch of kite falling out. It's like kite miracles. You're like, wow, Z man! Alright, next up, we have parsimony. Parsimony. Now, parsimony here just basically means selfishness because you're pretty selfish right now. This old hag is selfish and he's like, she stays behind and says, eh, I haven't finished yet. I have to tell you all my stories. And every, she's selfish. She's so parsimony. And she turns them into parts of money. So she literally rips up her piece of money. Wait, I don't believe this example. Wait a second. All right, so here's the actual example. She is a millionaire, and she hates spending money. Every time she has to spend money, she rips her dollar in, into pieces, and she gives that to the cashier. And cashier is like, you know, we can't accept parts of money. You just made that part piece of money useless. They're like, I don't care. Accept it, or you get nothing at all. Well, then you'll get no products. Naha, I'm stealing them. Haha, you're a shoplifter. You're banned from the shop forever. All right, next up. We have dejected. Dejected here just basically means despondent. Uh, despondent. Dejected. And of course, this just means despondent. You're really down. You're feeling bad. You're a downer. You're being a downer, and that works out pretty well. So you're flying this D, and you're, well, uh, your Admiral A says. Come back with this fighter jet without any scratch on it, and I will let you keep it. However, if you do get a track on it, then don't you dare come back here with a very, very unnoticed old thing. Like, what jet? Don't do that at all. Like, well, there goes your fighter jet. You have to parachute off, and like, I'm never going to hear the end of this. Well, the D got ejected. Next up, we have Fortuitous. Fortuitous is basically a fluke. And, of course, here we just have to use the word bees here. So, for the two of us. Don't you dare fortuitous uh, this fortuitous or fluke, this darn little piece of parchment, or else we'll both not be fortuitous. Uh, next, our next word is indolent. Now, indolent. Of course, here, indolent just basically means you're being idle, and since you're indoors, you kind of hate being idle at all. It's snowing outside, it's chilly, and you can't wear this outside. You need a proper wearing, like this woman right here, your wife. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is your wife. And yeah, end of the Lent is literally where you actually remember this. So you got some wine, eh? You drank some up, and now you're, you can't be idle. You can't be indolent. You can't be indolent. And that's pretty much it. Next up, we have clandestine. Clandestine just basically means you're covert and you're only thinking about things too. So you have a bunch of these snacks, and you're like, oh, I really want it all. However, you basically real. Oh, wait a second. Radio, this is bequeath. Now, bequeath just basically means you give someone something. And this actually makes more sense because you remember with the word bee queen. It raised all that information from your mind from earlier. Bee queen. So the bee queen has bequeathed everything to the next bee queen and says, I gave you the property to lay all my eggs, all this stuff, and 50% share, no, 25% share of the colony. All right, next up, we have Fortuitous. Now, Fortuitous here, just, this makes it more of us, make more sense. Oh, you're fluking the wine, eh? Well, that's for the two of us. You're being Fortuitous for the two of us. Uh, next up, this is our actual word, indolent. Ah, yeah, this makes more sense. I end of Lent. So, you ate all your Lent, you're out of stuff, but you're so indolent that all you want is chocolate. How about you're so indolent that you can't get up? Next up, we have this word called clandestine. Now, clandestine just basically means something that's done in secrecy. Just like what the, uh, I'm not gonna say the actual word here, KKK did. Except this clan behind you, that's not the KKK, they're just drawn like it. However, if you look closely, they have a C on there. And according to the example, they're actually called the Communist Clan. 
Well, I at least that's something. The Carmel's Clan holds one of their clandestine secret meetings in the, the dark of the night. Their leader gives a rousing speech on how the clan is destined to take over the world. Excuse me? Next up, Munificent. Let me just write it down real quick. This is how you spell it. Uh, munificent. Now, munificent just basically means you're extremely liberal in giving things away. You're very generous. Like, would you go to the moon if I sent you vacation giveaway? Go to the moon. However, it's a one-way trip. You have to pay for the part of the part going back. I'm going to give away two. No, actually. I'm going to give away four just because of this. I'm going to give away my vacations. Four vacations so you guys can all have a little round trip. Because we all need round trips, don't we? But then, of course, you... I'm not sure how you're going to get back to Earth. Wow. Wow. Moon, if I sent... Would you go to the moon? Would you... Because I'm munificent, would you go to the moon if I sent you? Moon, if I sent. Munificent. Next word is cacophonous. Cacophonous is basically... Me. We did this word before. Uh, let me just write smaller. Cacophony just basically means you're groaning, you're very harsh and discordant sounds like chalk, like fingernails on a chalkboard. That sounds really bad and I never want to do it. It even feels bad. And of course, with all that cacophonous stuff, we don't actually get a lot of things. Uh, some people are just cacophonous because they want to like, <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I know this kid in um, kindergarten class and he always made animals and makes cacophonous noises. And I was like, and the teacher's like, you stop. You're not an animal, so stop making animal noises. No, I am an animal. I want to be a cow when I grow up. That makes zero sense. Cows coughing on us. That's how you remember it. Cows coughing on us is such a cacophonous sound. All right, next up, we have ameliorate. Ameliorate. Ameliorate just basically means to make something more acceptable, more tasteful in this case. So that just basically means to alleviate or to improve something. Now, ameliorate needs some amelioration. So you took off your shoes, which was also a salt and pepper shaker. And with that, you go ahead and sprinkle it on and, well, hope there was no dust in the salt and pepper shoes because, oh, it's holes. Nice. Lights. Alright, next up, we have predecessor. Oops, sorry. Predecessor. Predecessor just basically means your ancestor, the person who you are from, your ancestor. In this case, this bread is trying to find his ancestry. So he goes ahead into the bread and he goes out. And he goes and tr keeps trying to go ahead and figure out where it is. So he's right, bread. And uh, after that, he basically go like goes it down to these two, Jeremy and Swellen. And he's like, excuse me, but I can't seem to find any information after that. Hmm, I need to find, do some, do some digging. Next up, we have Harbinger. Harbinger just basically means, well, you're a forerunner. You're like a foreshadowing of a future event. A sign of things to come. So you have five, so you have five kids, they're all roughly about the same age, they all got their driving license, and you give the oldest one a chance to drive the car. However, he crashed the car. And now you're sort of fortuitous for giving the other, you're, you're sort of, you feel like this is a harbinger, and you're reluctant to give the other four the chance to actually go ahead and drive the car. Because you don't want any more dollar 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 bills. But then again, these are all four kids. At least I'd be willing. I I I'd be willing to give this one a shot. Maybe this. Definitely, definitely not these two. So that's it for today. I really hope you guys did enjoy this episode. I really hope you didn't. About for this one, so you can watch the other more fun episodes. And so until next time, shout out, peace, bye bye, kids, and whoever's watching this right now, bye.